Today we're going to talk about fields. In particular, we're going to try to answer the question, what is a field? Now before we do that, I want to, um, let's have a look at what the expert, uh, Mr. Ken Wheeler, has to say on this subject. Sir, can you define this one word? No! They will never define it. Okay, descriptions are not explanations. And everything in the universe is this, fields. No branch of physics ever define a field, and of course they'll always mention the four Maxwellian field equations. And then I will point to them that Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only define a field as expressed in effect over a given vector over a period of time. So I basically agree with what Ken is saying here. He's saying um, that no one has ever defined a field unambiguously. So that's the clarification that I'm making here, is no one has ever unambiguously defined a field. Many people have tried to define a field. Many people have their own definitions of, or their own ideas of what a field is. So what we really need to do is disambiguate this term field um, and that is what I'm going to try to attempt to do in this video. Now Ken Wheeler says descriptions are not explanations and I think this is a really important statement. I think this is probably one of the most important statements that he's making here. He's differentiating between descriptions and explanations. Explanations are um, what we're looking for. Descriptions just describe what's going on. Explanations is really what we're looking for here. So we need to figure out what can we explain and what can we describe. So here is a definition of a field, um, a very simplistic one. This is the first one that popped up when I looked for the word field. So here it says the field is an area or region of land in particular, regions planted with crops. Uh, for example, a cornfield. So a cornfield is a field. Um, it is defined as a field. It is a region of land. Okay, so it's a region of space, a region of the universe. Okay, uh, and in this particular case, a cornfield is planted with corn. And so here you can see the rows of corn that have been planted, and this is technically a field. So this is a, a good first iteration for understanding um, what a field is. So now let's uh, have a look at how physics defines a field. In physics, a field means that a physical quantity is assigned to every point in space or more generally space time. Okay, so that's how physics defines a field. This is kind of a weird way of wording it. In physics, a field means, okay, that's kind of a weird way of wording it, but uh, anyways, so that's uh, basically what they're saying is, it, is um, it, it assigns a physical quantity to every point in space. A field is seen as extending throughout a large region of space so that it influences everything. So in physics, um, basically the field is the whole universe, I guess. Um, so it extends throughout a large region of space, maybe the whole universe, so that it influences everything. So their definition of, of a field is that the field influences things. Okay, so that's just how they're defining it. The strength of the field usually varies over a region. So if the strength of the field didn't vary over a region, then you'd have flat space. So a flat um, land that didn't have any hills would really be just a flat space. So, but generally we're more interested in fields that vary over a certain region. And it was Michael Faraday uh, was the one to coin the term apparently in 1849. Okay, so um, I want to generalize that a little bit. So I want to use the same definition, but I want to make it a little more general. 
So at least, no, I, basically I want to take the one, the definition for the land and I want to apply it to the universe. Okay, so uh, I want to find a field as a region of the universe. Okay, it can be space, it can be land, it can be um, is anywhere in between. Okay, so a field is a region of the universe where each location in the field of view. So there, there's another use of the word field that's quite common. We talk about a field of view. So in the case of this cornfield, the field of view is the region that I cropped out of this image. Okay, so let's start over. A field is a region of the universe where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. Okay, so in this case, we could take the field. Uh, so a physical quantity is like, it's a um, usually a value, a number, a uh, mathematical um, quantity, quantified, it's quantified. So if I was gonna quantify this field, I would be quantifying it um, in a binary fashion. So I would quantify corn, or no corn. So I would take all the locations, each location in space that has corn, and I would mark each location in space that doesn't have corn, and then you would have a corn field because you would have places where there is corn and places where there isn't corn, and these field lines would be marking the, um, the configuration of this field. So this is, you know, just a nice analogy. Don't take it too literally, but this just gives us the idea that each point in space can be assigned a value and or planted with a seed of corn. So now we're going to apply the same def definition to a gravitational field. So in this case, a field is a region of the universe Okay, in this case, we're talking about this um, box with a gravitational mass in the center. Okay, a field is a region of the universe where each location in the field of view in the box is assigned a physical quantity. So in the case of a gravitational field, the physical quantity in every space, every location in this box would be is is marked by an arrow so um so really what we're looking at the physical quantity is the force being felt on maybe a test object a test uh, particle that we place here so each point in this box is, is a is assigned a um a force and a vector a force vector so the, the vector points in the direction of the force and the force itself is shown here with the, the red arrows are the bigger force and when the arrows are bigger, it's a bigger force and the ones out here are smaller uh, arrows, meaning that the force is less out here. So each of these points in the box, and of course you can do all the points because there's an infinite number of locations inside this box, but you uh, choose your spacing and you um, calculate your values for each point that you want to investigate within the box. And so, um, so a, a field is a region of the universe where each location within the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. Okay, so a field is a mathematical description. Okay, this is a mathematical description. These arrows and the length of the arrow uh, and the location of the arrow, these, this is all a mathematical construct. Okay, vectors are mathematical constructs. And field strength, the strength at each location within this box is a mathematical construct. And mathematical constructs are descriptions. So a field is a mathematical description, not an explanation. Okay, descriptions are not explanations. So fields don't explain anything. 
They don't explain anything. They, they just describe what's going on in that region of space. Okay, fields do not do anything. Okay, fields are an output, not an input. A field is a mathematical description of the forces being felt within this field of view. So it's a mathematical description of force. So fields don't act on things. Only forces can act upon things. So really a field, a field is a mathematical description of the forces that are going on in some region of space. In this case, it's a gravitational force. So the force is real. What we really want to get to the root of is what is creating the force. And fields do not create forces. Forces create fields. So here's another kind of um, field, what we call a field. And I'm going to read my um, definition again and apply it to the electric field. So a field is a region of the universe where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. So in this case, in this field of view, we have electric charges and the electric charges are creating forces and the forces are being described by these arrows right here. So I'm going to run, I'm going to switch over to my demo which is right here. Hopefully it's in my field of view. Let's make sure it is, and I think it is. So the way the software works is you take a charge and you place it in the field. You place it in the field of view. And as you move this charge around, you can see the arrows are changing. So the this is a positive charge, so the um, arrows are pointing away from the positive charge. Now, if I put another positive charge in here, you would see how that charge is affecting the other charge, okay, or affecting the, um, the vectors. I'm gonna reset that. So let's start with a positive charge, and let's put in a negative charge. Okay, so you can, I will put a link to this software in the description. You can play around with it. But the main idea here is that each point in this field of view is assigned a vector which points in the direction of the force. And as you can see, as you get further away from these charges, um, the, the arrows are a darker color. So the, in this case, the mathematical uh, visualization of these charges is that the further away from the charge you are, the darker the arrows are, and the closer. So if I move this charge around, you see the arrows far away from it become dark, and the arrows close to it become light. And so this is uh, kind of fun to play around with. You can see how this is affected by um, moving these charges around. So this is a field, this is a mathematical um, visualization of the forces that, are, that are, would be experienced by a test charge that we place somewhere in this, in this region. So here is a test charge and you can see that when I place it over here, the force is going this way. And when I place it closer to the charges, the arrow gets bigger, which means it's feeling a stronger force. Okay, so as I move this around, you see as I move it further away, the arrow gets shorter. And I move, as I move it closer, the arrow gets really big. And so that's one way of visualizing the um, the force field, okay, this is a field showing the forces in various different ways. 
And so there's another way that we can um, investigate this region of space, this field of view with these two test chart, with these two char um, charges, positive and negative charges in here. And you might not be able to see the numbers, but what this is doing is it's showing the voltage. Now this is very much like that experiment I showed you in the last couple of videos with the Hall sensor. And when I place the Hall sensor in a certain location, I get a certain reading. So this is exactly the same. As I move this around, I'm getting a different voltage reading. Now what I can do here is I can add the isopotential lines. Okay, so everywhere that I place this cursor, this X here, okay, I can place an isopotential line. And as I move further away from the charges, the isopotential lines are bigger. And as I move closer to the charges, they're smaller. So basically I'm just marking all the isopotential lines of a particular voltage, just like I did in, um, like I measured and showed you how I measured in the previous video. So, um, so this is just another way of mathematically depicting the forces in this region. So this is part of the field. Okay, so the field is a mathematical description. The field is a mathematical description. And I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here. So this is um, the isopotential lines from, uh, from that software. Okay, and um, I've got both the isopotential lines and the vectors um, pointing in the direction of the force. And so this is a complete description of the field, if you want to call it that. Um, just the arrows alone aren't enough to describe the field. Um, just the colors alone aren't enough. So like you, there, you need a lot of information to get, to get a, all the ways of looking at this field. And um, fields are just mathematical descriptions. They are not real. They're not real in the sense that there aren't these strings in space that are that are doing anything. These are just mathematical descriptions of what's going on in this field of view. Okay, so here's the thing with the isopotential lines. So I've you know I've been having um, been working on trying to figure out the true meaning behind the isopotential lines in relation to the ferro lens, but not just that, in relation to itself as well, because um, some people think, oh, the isopotential lines are just, you know, that they don't mean anything. Well, everything means something, okay? Everything is important. The isopotential lines are just as important as the, um, the other ways of depicting this field and mathematically representing the field. But here's the thing. The, here is a picture of the ferro cell that I took um, last year or the year before, I can't remember. And so what I did was I took the, the ferro cell. This, there is a cylinder magnet in here, okay? And so I took the ferro cell, and this is the dielectric inertial plane here right? And I threw some iron filings onto it. I put a piece of glass on top of the ferro cell so I wouldn't scratch the ferro lens itself and threw some um, iron filings on there. And you can see very clearly that um, the lines from the ferro cell with the lights, the lights are on the outside here and these light paths, okay, these light, light paths are orthogonal to the um, the iron filings. And you see a similar thing here where the these arrows, which really represent the iron filings, this is these these are the direction that the iron filings would point if I put an iron filing there, it's gonna line up like that. It's gonna line up orthogonal to the isopotential lines, as you can see. So um, there's a lot of similarities between what the ferrocell is doing 
in this field of view, in this field of view with the dielectric inertial plane uh, being this way and north and south being this way. Okay, so this would be analogous to the electric field and the similarities are, are really kind of uncanny, at least to me, the similarities are uncanny that um, the isopotential lines along with the, uh, what you would call the electric field or the dielectric field or, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, and the um, ferrocell, the ferrocell plus the iron filings. So the ferrocell plus the iron filings are telling us, you, you know, what's going on around this magnet. Not in the magnet, around the magnet. We can't really see inside the magnet. We don't know what's going on inside the magnet. I can only know what's going on in and around the magnet. And so here is an overlay. Here's an overlay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to alpha blend between the two. So if I go really slow, you can really see the correlation between these two images. Um, and they're fairly well registered in the sense that um, these arrows do seem to be pointing in the same direction, the same direction as the, um, the iron filings. So this is pointing this way and this iron filing is... Um, pointing that way and the you know down here and down here and these are pointing in and these are pointing in if you look at this image very closely you see there are a lot of similarities between where the iron what well, where the iron filings go and where these arrows go and but what's even more interesting because that is fairly well expected is that these isopotential lines from the software in this view, which would be the dielectric, this would be the dielectric inertial plane if this was a magnet, okay? They match up quite nicely. They are taking very similar trajectories, okay? And this is really, it it's, seems so obvious to me that at least in this view, now I can't really say for any other view because the, this particular view is um, the dielectric plane where you can see the dielectric plane um, in this view the um, these two field diagrams i guess you could say this is the field diagram and uh, which represents the forces and this would be um, the physical reality with the iron filings and the um, ferrocell lines where the light, this is the trajectory that the light takes through the ferro cell. Okay, so the, it's my opinion that isopotential lines are, are real in the sense that they are a mathematical description of one aspect of the forces that are going on inside this field of view. And I proved that, at least I proved that I can measure, easily measure the isopotentials around, in and around the magnet. Okay, so I showed you that in the last um, couple of videos, right? All of these points correspond to the minus 0 0.06 volt isopotential line. And this is a... This was the experiment I did to make those measurements, as you remember. This is the Hall sensor. This is the spherical magnet. This is the voltmeter. And um, so I'm going to read my, my definition again in the context of this experiment. So a field is a region of the universe. In this case, I'm talking about the region around the magnet where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. Okay, 
So that's, uh, and so when I do that, I basically get one isopotential line. When I did my experiment, I just get one isopotential line, but I could measure a whole bunch of them. And this is what the isopotential lines look like around the magnet. Now this is, again, it's a mathematical construct of um, representing one aspect of the forces that um, we see in and around a magnet, especially around the magnet, because we don't know what's going on in the magnet. Okay, so I did another experiment. So, you know, some people disagree with me that these isopotential lines are real or that they have any validity. And um, so the next experiment, I'm basically going to show you that these isopotential lines um, have physical reality. They have a physical existence that we can visually see. Now, they, obviously, I measured it here, so I shouldn't really have to go any further than this, but um, I'm going to basically show you another experiment that shows the validity of the isopotential lines themselves. So in this experiment, okay, in this setup, I've got a magnet here. Okay, this is a North Pole and the South Pole. And I've got a piece of paper just, you know, to, um, you'll see. So in this first experiment, what I do is, first of all, I'm showing you that's the North Pole. And I take a little ball bearing and I am rolling it on the paper. Okay, so you can see that as I, as I drop the ball bearing, <coughs> excuse me, okay, as I place the ball bearing on the piece of paper, it's not going in a straight line. It is actually following the isopotential curve. Okay, it's following the isopotential curve. Now, as a baseline, as a baseline, I made a little video where I just drop the uh, the um, ball bearing. Well, there I just placed it there. So basically, it is rolling to the right on its own and it's doing that because my table is not perfectly level and and that's a good thing because um, I don't want to have to push the little ball bearing to get it to move I want it to just move all on its own so it's, there's a slight um, in tilt to this table that makes it roll to the right so now let's go back to the original video which is the North Pole. And you'll see that I'm placing the ball bearing and it's moving, it's curving along the isopotential lines. So instead of, it's not flying straight to the magnet, okay, it's curving, it's following the path of the isopotential line. Okay, it's doing a nice little curve there, right in here. Okay, that, now it's getting much closer to the magnet. Oop, that's getting a little wiggly. Okay, so you can see it's not, it's following the similar path each time. Now that's going to <coughs> end up on the magnet. Okay, so I'm going to do another one here. Okay, this is the south pole now, just to show you that the south and the north behave the same. So there we go. Um, now I'm trying, I'm gonna push it the other way. It doesn't really wanna go that way, but even when I push it the other way, it still goes along the isopotential line. And so let's play that again, just to show you what's going on. Okay, so it is definitely following the isopotential lines. 
is not going straight to the magnet, nor does it want to. It wants to curve around and then go to the magnet. So I thought, well, I want to, I wanted to paint, I wanted to figure out a way to, you know, mark this ball bearing and then watch it um, and actually paint the path of it just so I could actually, you know, have a quick look to see if it does look like the isopotential line. And so I was thinking, what do I have? What do I have? What can I use? And then I realized that I have a bunch of ferrofluid and ferrofluid it is very stainy. It stains if you touch it. And so um, I had some ferrofluid that I'd mixed with some WD-40. And so I just dipped the ball bearing in that and made it go along the, you know, did this ex same experiment. And this is what I got. This up here. So it, it's, it was a very messy job, but I just did it this one time. I just dropped it a bunch of times and let it um, follow the path and you can see that it is definitely although it you could see that it sometimes vibrates when I drop it it wiggles and but it still follows the isopotential lines okay so why would it do that so let's go back to this definition of iso equal equal potential lines or isopotential lines okay equal potential lines are like contour lines of a contour map, contour lines on a map, like this. Okay, this is a contour map, um, which is a region of space where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. In this case, a contour map is uh, assigned an altitude, and these lines, these iso equal lines, are lines of equal altitude. Okay, so, but that's not what makes this important. So equal potential lines are always perpendicular to the electric field. Okay, we know that. Um, in three dimensions, the lines form an equal potential surface. Okay, so this, if this, in 3D, these would be equal, equal potential surfaces. And then movement along the equal potential surface requires no work because such movement is always perpendicular to the field. And so um, it's really perpendicular to the force field. Okay, so the field is the mathematical construct. So the equal potential lines are the mathematical construct, equal, equal potential lines are perpendicular to the mathematical um, electric field lines. And um, so this is the picture from Michael Snyder's software that I showed in the last video. Um, and this is, by definition, a field because this is a mathematical um, a region of the universe around a magnet where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. So in this case, the physical quantity would be voltage. Okay, that's like I measured in my experiment. And there's two depictions of this voltage. One depiction is are these lines, which are orthogonal to the equal potential lines. And the other, um, so this is just a graph. It's a map of the forces, with the, of the forces of the potential of the strength of the magnetic field, the further away you get from the magnet, the, the lower the strength of the magnetic field, of the magnetic force, okay? So then when you look in closer, you see that, so these lines would be analogous to these arrows from the electric field um, diagram. Okay, so what is a field? Well, what is, what is a field not? Okay, a field is not a thing in of itself. A field is a point, okay, a field point, sorry, is a mathematical abstraction of a force. So every point, every location within this field is um, 
assigned a force and a direction, a vector, okay? A field cannot be felt. Only forces can be felt. Okay, only forces can be felt. So forces are real and fields are abstract. Okay, the field is, is a mathematical abstraction of a force. So forces are the only things that are real, right? So now the, you know, the job of physics is to, um, to try to figure out, you know, why do the forces behave? Why do we have forces that behave like magnetism, right? What is it that creates these forces that we can mathematically describe with fields? Um, and that's basically, uh, what we, what physics is trying to do. So, so hopefully in this, um, video, I've cleared up the idea of a field, or at least I've defined a field. This is how I define a field. I define a field as a region of the universe where each location in the field of view is assigned a physical quantity. So a field is not a thing. A field does not do anything. A field does not act on anything. Um, but they're, they're real. They're real in the sense that, they're real in the sense that, uh, especially the isopotential lines, the isopotential lines, which many think are, are not real, that don't, don't correspond to physical reality, uh, at least I've argued with people about this, not everyone thinks this, but some people still don't get it, that the isopotential lines are um, just as real as the electropotential lines. And you can see it right there. You can see it right there. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's informative. I hope it helps you differentiate the difference between a field um, and physical reality. Okay, this is physical reality. This is physical reality. And fields are abstractions. This, whatever the force is going on around this magnet, the force, the forces are causing this motion. Okay, the forces are causing um, the ball bearing to take this path to the magnet and not the straight path. And that's about it.